episode. Oh, and if you want to watch the live chat, um, the YouTube link is available. If you want me to send that to you, I can send that to you. I, I, I can watch the live chat while I'm while we're on here. If you want, some people prefer not to. Some people don't mind. Actually, yeah, no, I think that'll be a little too distracting for me. Yeah, some people is distracting. I, I, that makes sense. That's cool. But like, if you if you do, you know, there'll be people. Um, you can always watch it after too. But um, yeah, other than that, oh yeah, let me um edit this real quick. Get the links <laughs> in there. Awesome. Boom. Oh, wrong. Good issue. Appreciate you. Um, well, let's just get this already uh, underway. How you doing, bro? Shout out to those of you watching live in the live chat right now. Welcome to Peace Talk One Twenty Eight. Um, One Twenty Eight. What's that numerologically? Eight to eleven. Eleven. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I mean, like that. This this peace talk, by the way, is very very long overdue. So, 100%. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so definitely glad we could um, do this for sure. I actually spoke to Rachel the other day. So oh yeah, Rachel. I spoke to her yesterday. What's up, Rachel. Um. Other than that, you know, welcome you guys to episode one twenty eight, and today. Welcome. We have a special guest, a uh, really incredible, awesome guest, actually. And he Aw, goes, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> he goes by the spiritual bodybuilder, a.k.a. Nahum. The <laughs> um, is that how you say it? It's Nahum. Nahum. Like Vietnam. Okay. But, you know, that's exactly No H, why, okay. That's exactly why for a while I was going by Justin, because I'd, I'd be like, oh, hi, my name's Nahum. They'd be like, no, what's your name? Nahum. <laughs> no, what's your name? <laughs> Justin, nice to meet you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. That's funny. It works. Where is it from? Name is Hebrew, actually. It means oh, uh, it means the compassionate one. I try oh, to nice. I like to think that I embody that, you know. Right. I, and, of, and of course with my Aquarius moon, I'm a little bit of a an anomaly, you know. So that's where and it's 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 funny because once I was I was given the name spiritual bodybuilder. Um, it's a complete paradox, but I like to think that I, I, I carry that the meaning of that paradox very well. You do from experience. I definitely say that, um, and I'd love to get into that too. Um, it's great to know. It's great to know that's what your name means um, as well, and that it has Hebrew background. Um, the, um, I can definitely also relate with at least with my last name. Just people kind of like uh not really getting it right or whatnot but yeah, right. uh like yeah nanibi <laughs> right i've heard nibi nanevi neebs yeah Neebs is a good one right i will just continue to call you the dealer of peace the dealer of peace yeah. let's go that's what's up oh well, yeah yeah definitely grateful um i remember i met you when through a uh, lot of i think you you saw me as magic mike when i was on uh yep. Shen, and then we had a, a consultation that's when i found out you were here or you stayed in vegas that, that no the first time i reached out to you was i was living in california oh you were and, still in cali oh, yeah man. and that's when like bef like right before i was you know i was gonna have my daughter and oh interesting. that's when i was I was very, very lost. And I remember, I remember listening um, to you. I, I don't know if, if, if it was your first broadcast with Lada, but I just remember when you were talking, man, every single thing resonated. I was like, holy shit. Like me and this dude are on the same wavelength. And then when I moved out uh, back to Vegas, um, I had you come over. I did some body work on you. Yes, that <laughs> is definitely a memorable day. I will, And that's what I wanted to say too. Like um, you definitely do carry that i i didn't even see it as a paradox 
docs until you said it, but like I had never really in my life seen the archetype of like a spiritual bodybuilder before, but like to actually ever since that first day it really was put into perspective. And yeah, it was great body work that was done. I, I, I realized, uh, you know, certain uh, ways I could work on my posture and, um, and I know it was definitely memorable because of the the goody afterwards. The <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's I think that was that was what? That was the first time he did uh rape, right? I was about to say, yeah, I think that was the first time I did rape too. Like yeah. that was definitely quite the experience. Um <laughs> yeah, my eyes were teary and watery and uh Powerful stuff, man. Oh, powerful definitely stuff. powerful. I know in my Zodiac chart, you fall in my eighth house of like transformations and like a call activity. And I would say that has been a major feature of our relationship and friendship together. Um, yeah, hundred percent, man. I, was, was I the one that introduced you to, I, I know, I know uh, we did your first uh, sweat lodge together. Yep. You you remember that? Yep. It was so freaking hot in there, dude. I remember like about thirty minutes into it, like like you started freaking out because you. Couldn't I thought move. I was gonna die. I was about to yeah. run out. I was like, I need to leave. Like, Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> which which I'm so grateful for because if I ran out, I wouldn't have known that I could stay. And like, right? Hey. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Like the extent. Like I remember just smushing my face into those like sage leaves that we had on the ground. It was like fire going down my throat, but that made it okay somehow and then i think i i, I think uh, i think we did your first ayahuasca ceremony together too right i know you introduced me to ayahuasca you introduced yeah. me to the sweat lodge you introduced me to combo <laughs> you introduced yeah. me to uh i don't want to forget what else but like yeah the whole shebang man i, I i've gone through so so much transformation in a short time yeah um, buddy and Def and that was really the major part. And that's definitely something uh, I'm glad you said we we're going to keep this controversial because that's one thing that I'm so grateful about, you know, connecting with you as far as like taking spirituality to this realer level instead of spiritually bypassing. Um, one thing that was really a phrase that was really uh, said a lot was doing the work, like actually yeah. confronting these issues and taking these medicines and actually processing the uncomfort and pain and purging them. Um, it's it's yeah. real work. So you know what? And I I think that it was it was really like I know for about four years I was like just in that in that like rabbit hole man where i was like i will get to the core of my being and understand myself no matter what it takes and now look at what's going on in the world man it's like the people that have not done the work they're getting it thrown in their face and um and, I, and i'm seeing that like all this work that we've done over the years it enabled us to be in this place where now we purged all this deep dark stuff that is going on this in this global dark night of the soul and we're able to help people that much more and it was like, you know, we were just, it was just being guided, man. And, um, and, and now like we've come to this next level where it's like, all right, we were guided to heal ourselves and do the work and create this, you know, this super homie squad, this like soul tribe. And now we see like each one of us is just stepping up in that level and doing the work and really doing our part in a, in a, in a greater way to really change the collective. I think that we're doing some, some, some really important stuff here. So I'm really, uh, I'm really proud of you, man, for all the for all the work you've done, and and you're the first person ever to actually inspire me to really get into, uh, really get into astrology. So be, wow. you are a big part of the reason why I'm doing what I do now. Much so, appreciated. Uh, yeah, and and it's awesome to see you doing it every day because you really do bring such a unique, uh, you bring a unique perspective to. I was not even astrology, but spirituality with with the physicality, right? Like the, the bodybuilding aspect, yeah. and, you know, and, and being able to um, open up to, I don't even want to call it abstract and appreciate you, Master Nuda, but like, you know, real, real, it's, it's not, it's not a lot of spiritual fluff or mumbo jumbo. It's real practical advice about how to really bring out the best in your body and, and also just be yeah. healthy, which yeah, is real, real, awesome. real spiritual growth is, is not fun, man. It's ugly. It's, it's difficult, oh, yeah. it's scary, it's, 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 it's terrorizing at times, but 
when you finally, when you have that support and when you realize that you're not alone in this and, and you, and you go through it. And I find, especially nowadays, everyone that I meet is just automatic, man. Like, like just people are, I, maybe it's the way that I, that I word things at this point. I don't really, really know. I think it's just my energy, but, but it's like, people are just having aha moments, epiphanies and growing and learning and just cracking their shells. And I, and you know, and I, and I know you have that effect on people too. And it's, uh, it's 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 really fascinating to see how the energetics of everything work and then are incorporated into the physical body in the emotional body that that like i'm fascinated by the interconnectivity of it all it's um and 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 i'm, I'm actually i just finished writing my second ebook uh, that that i'm gonna uh launch probably the end of next week um on uh discussing the interconnectivity of the like the fascial system with the emotional, you know, how, how it's in, interconnected with the emotional and then the chakras and then our survival archetypes bring it all together. So you can look through it. It'll, it's going to be like a, like, like a guide, right? So you can see, okay, I'm going through this. I have this pain going on in my body. It's associated with this chakra, which means this emotional issue that I, my body is. So it's like, it's like decoding the language of the energy of our consciousness and how it speaks to us through our body and our mind to be able to understand, okay, this is what I need to look at. And then yeah. once, once you understand and identify that spot that you need to look at, then it's sort of like you automatically have to take responsibility for it. I think, think right now, you know, there's a, the, the, this pandemic thing that's going on is really playing on the victim consciousness of, of, of the collective conscious. And those people that are really stuck in this victim consciousness are having it thrown in their face and it's not easy. It's not easy. And, uh, you know, and, um, but it's so interesting, like this psycho spiritual warfare, which I know you've been talking about this for a while, man, like with all your posts, like, look guys, this shit's coming up. We need to get ready. We need to make it happen. And now that's happening. It's like, you can really feel it. Like you walk around and you see, you can almost feel like the fear or how people are just stuck in their shit. Yeah. And, but but I also think that by us doing this work, you know, pe one person at a time, just little by little, everybody's everybody's waking up. It's a beautiful thing to see. It really is. Even and I'm more fascinated with the disinformation and the um, like. It's almost as if the the powers that be um, underestimated how effective this work would be because they didn't really right. know it. So they're just going overboard to get people to fear what we do or to just kind of splash that dash of pseudoscience or or once again just fear pandemic mongering um when people kind of need this the most and and i don't even think it's working what they're trying to do so it's kind of interesting i think i think it's a little bit of a a psychological chess game right now yeah and especially especially with with saturn now in retrograde at at uh, one degree of aquarius you know aquarius is all about you know community and connection and internet and you know communication so I think as Saturn goes back into Capricorn, you know, people are going to fight back and, and it's going to open up a little bit, but then Saturn's going to go back in yep. to Aquarius. Um, and that shit's, and then of course we're going to come into the Saturn Uranus square. Right. Which is going to last, what, what, like, what, like a year? Oh my year God, and a half. you're right. We're having a Saturn Uranus square. That's going to be great. Right after the Jupiter Saturn conjunction at zero degrees of Aquarius. Yeah. And, which, and that, Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, um, I was gonna say that. Oh wait. Well, that that's just very fascinating as far as like um, the 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 we've only been one degree, like you said, and like as soon as we were one All degree, this shit. social distancing. Um, did you notice they started fact checking on social media now? Oh, so like, God, yeah. which is it's weird. Bullshit. Right. Like. It's if it's not in in, in 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 alignment with the uh, what the the WHO and the CDC, then then it's not fact. But we have we have PhDs and, and and doctors and like people that are subject matter experts in the field that are coming out and they're fact checking these fucking. And they're fact. Yeah, facts. I think Colby. On, shout out to Colby. I think he posted something about that where he's okay. like, you can like you're watching now professional ed, uh, experts on free platforms who are not bought out by anybody telling the truth, but you're a conspiracy theorist if you listen to them versus people who are clearly bought out by these organizations telling you what they want you to say and, and you're gonna listen to them. Um, right. So I thought that was very interesting too. But <laughs> yeah. for, for those who aren't aware, what is your sun, moon and rising? 
My I'm a Capricorn sun. I'm an Aquarius moon and an Aries rising. And your North Node? Uh, my North Node's in Virgo. Oh, conjunct Saturn with Saturn. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's... I'm a late bloomer. That's okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I feel you on that late bloomer squad. That's, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, I actually I wanted to. I, I so I've tried to. Um, I've recorded twice this video that I was going to do about um, the interconnectivity of Bill Gates and Adolf Hitler. Right. Mm. Both times that I recorded it. I went back to edit it to to upload it, and it was fucking gone. What? And it's weird because I've been seeing that from a, like a lot of like like another one of my friends um uh, saved that 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 documentary, the uh, pandemic to her phone, and yeah. she went back to uh to share that with someone. It was gone out of her phone. Out of her phone, right? Yeah, uh, like, and some crazy weird shits going on, man. The only time that's happened for me, I put out this one video on YouTube about. I completely debunked um, Bill Nye. Like Bill Nye was on. Oh, yeah. He yeah he was on this um one uh, now this, and he was talking every every fact he said about astrology was not a fact. And I debunked <laughs> every well, point. And then I also and then I also debunked a fucus. The video's gone from YouTube. I can't find the file on my really? computer. Like it's gone. I have no idea. It's almost as if it didn't exist. Wait wait you you said you debunk a fucus. Yeah, so it was Bill Nye and Ophiuchus. I, I debunked Bill Nye and I debunked Ophiuchus as a zodiac sign. And like, how how do, how do you deep how, how do you? Oh, okay. I debunked I debunked Ophiuchus as far as like the thirteenth sign. Like, yeah. I deep um I debunked the theory about it being a sign and about how it's not a zodiac sign. It's just a constellation. And it's not really. Oh. Like, yeah. Interesting. It's, because because constellations are not zodiac signs, so that's another um, mystery. Yeah, because there are a lot more constellations out there other than the zodiac signs, right? Exactly what's, right. What's the differentiating factor? Great question. So you've heard about the procession of the equinoxes, how like in Vedic or sidereal, twenty three degrees, it's shifted versus Western, right? So yeah. so the reason, and this is how you can know like who really knows their astrology versus who uses placebo effects. So right. you have you have the constellations in the sky and before the advent of modern science that could calculate these shifts, a lot of Babylonian astrology and Indian astrology, they were based on the constellations. But what actually, the reason why, and what degree is your sun in Capricorn? 10 degrees. 10 degrees, perfect. So the reason why your Capricorn sun isn't because your son was in the constellation of, of Capricorn. When you were born, your son was actually in the constellation of Sagittarius. So okay. the, reason, the reason why your spirit is Capricorn and why, you know, you carry these traits, because you see mm -hmm. some people that are like, oh, well, I feel my side real positions too. And it's not that you feel your side real positions, you just have natal energies in that side real position you have. So that's okay. why you think you feel, it. but like what makes you a Capricorn isn't that your son was in the constellation of Sagittarius. It's that you were born during the solstice. So it was the least amount of day and the most amount of night. The reason why astrology is accurate is because of the sun's ecliptic path that it travels and its intersection with the Earth's celestial equator. So these intersections create the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Right. Th those intersections create our seasons. So that's why we have the equinoxes and ah. the solstice. These are not the constellations. So scientists- Okay, will, that will spread yeah, wow, that makes sense. So scientists and, and disinformation experts will say, oh, well, astrology isn't legit because the signs have shifted, the constellations have shifted, and it's not based on the constellation. The constellations were named after the zodiac signs. The zodiac, the, the zodiac is an imaginary space that's right. mathematically delineated because the sun goes 360 degrees wow. around that path. And so what makes Aries, Aries is the equinox, equal day, equal night. And so it's the mathematical, exactly. The reason why yeah. interpretations are accurate isn't because of any spirituality magic, although it's all magic, but it's because <laughs> the opposition between the moon and the sun, the squares between the planets 
and right. its relationship with the earth. That's what makes astrology accurate. And scientists have proven that seasons affect temperaments. Right. That's, exactly. that's why zodiac signs are accurate. Oh, so, man, you're a fucking genius. Appreciate that, you. That, that, that seems like the way you say it makes it sound so common sense. But but you really got to dig into like like the fundamentals of it to really like comprehend that and how it affects our energy and our spirit. Yeah, man, let me even share an article to um, I'll share an article uh, at least before or after it's done to kind of like explain yeah, more of that, like a couple of them, because um, that's when you'll find that such uh, practices like 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 they try and make it sound like, oh, a fucus is a new discovery and, and scientists just uh, found out forever. Right. They've been talking about this shit for since like the late 90s, acting like yeah. it's a new discovery just to, to confuse people. <laughs> even even NASA, NASA, who we depend on for information is lying about astrology. Like the information they have on there is pseudoscientific. It's well, not fuck, everybody's lying about something right now. Right, right, <laughs> there you go. You know, I mean, it's Venus square Neptune, man. We don't know who the fuck, what, what, which, which way is up. Reality is like, yeah, I sort of feel like it's like, uh, it's like inception right now, right? Like right. we're yeah, inside of a dream that's inside of a dream that's inside of a dream. True that. And as this shifting is going on, it's, it's literally shifting the foundation of our consciousness. and um have you have you read uh the book of Ra, the, the law of one no i know heard of it though yeah you should you should look into that book man it's pretty it's pretty fascinating shit it talks about like everything that's going on right now and it, it even like it breaks down everything back to the beginning of time wow. and how energy really works at like all these deepest levels and these different um these different uh entities that are uh fourth fifth sixth dimensional beings that are influencing like the collective conscious decisions and it's it goes pretty deep man that's what's up yeah and did you hear did you know that uh the the military now has a a uh, section of the military designated to space war space force right yeah the thing that's fascinating about it is that trump um established that and trump has god of the sky uranus on his son on yeah. the north node in the tent so it's like i thought that was very symbolic like, right so so that'll be really so what do you think how, how do you think that will will relate to this to this uranus square saturn um uh th thing that's coming up and with the election and everything because a lot of the stuff in the world going on right now like they're trying to manipulate the situation so trump doesn't win but I personally think that, you know, Trump is like the embodiment of, of Uranus and the rest of the whole political shitstorm is the embodiment of Saturn, Absolutely. right? That Unless, control dynamic. And then you yep, have yep. the revolutionary dynamic and in the world, you have like the people waking up and you know, all this, this, this very powerful revolutionary spirit and this Saturnian control dynamic is um, they're like, like literally like in mythology, like they're fucking hating on each other big time right now. Big time, big time. <laughs> and and let's just be on, like whether you hate Trump or not, he's in the 10th house. Everything that he's done has exposed government and system, yeah. like directly or indirectly. And like, and this is where, this is where like the work we do is so important because you have people making real life decisions that if they listen to this wisdom, it's gonna save a lot of money. It's gonna save a lot of stress. Like we shouldn't have the fact that we're having an election right now is hmm. pointless because Donald Trump is going through a nodal return. Like he's de he was destined to win. Yeah, he was destined to win yeah. the, the twenty twenty election. That's why he yeah. won twenty sixteen. So okay. like, it's it's all happening in front of you know everybody's face as far as yeah. how uh, much of this like <laughs> energy plays out. Oops, my bad. As far as much as this energy plays out. <laughs> what up, yo? <laughs> you need help at all? No, I'm good. All right, for sure. Yeah, uh, that's my sister. It's Lady Joe. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's um, it's it's very amazing because I feel like, especially with the second term, like that's really where um, it's gonna really take off and really kick in and and. But you're really you're really right. It, it, you're that Uranian aspect is very revolutionary. The Saturn is is definitely uh very. Um, I was gonna say government -y, but also, you know, we see it crumbling with with it, with its influence on Pluto. So. Oh yeah. So so the the United States Pluto return is gonna be exact sometime in twenty late twenty twenty three, right? Great question. 
Yeah, 2023. Yeah, yep. Because um, March 23, 2023. Oh, I need to show. Okay, so when I saw this, I had chills all over my body. I, I actually went into a mad rant because I realized yeah. like the, I love the, your rants. the way the universe is moving is so synchronized. I, want, I, I just want you to see like what's going to happen. Uh, the end of Pluto and Capricorn, basically, and just kind of look at the <laughs> the dance that the planets make it's it, it was just like jesus christ so <laughs> oh yeah okay so we're, we're on february right pluto you see pluto here on mercury yeah okay oh, so wow. let's go maybe a month into it boom so all the energy is clear if you notice um leo virgo libra scorpio these are all the social energies in zodiac oh good yeah <laughs> And they've been empty. And ever since they've been empty, like we've we've had little to no like official social energy. So like this is kind of closing the door on that. So we see Saturn actually um enter Pisces. Pisces. Yeah. And so this is this is the crazy part. You see oh, the moon wow. in Scorpio? The yeah. moon's gonna the moon's gonna be traveling, right? It's gonna go past Capricorn, close the door on that, it's gonna go past Aquarius. Close the door on that. Oh, you, see, you see the sun in Pisces, yeah. 29 degrees, and then Aries oh. season, boom. And Holy shit. We have that new moon, and then bam. Wow, dude. That's literally like the new beginning, right. like a legit threshold point. Exactly. Wow. That's a trip. It, yeah. And and it's just, yeah. we start the new cycle, and then Pluto starts in Aquarius, Saturn starts in in uh, Pisces and to me that's like the beginning of the end because like it's just wrapping the book on everything that created this system since the last Pluto return um, and, 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 uh, and I saw Jupiter a uh, Jupiter there is conjunct Chiron too oh good looks and not only that um, after Saturn and Pisces Saturn's gonna officially escort Neptune into Aries. Oh shit. So I forget. Saturn and Neptune conjunct. That's it, going from Pisces in Aries. to Aries. That's yeah. what do you what's your take on that? Okay, so we have um wow, 2023 is going to be a fucking crazy year. It is, man. Like we think we think 2020 and it is crazy. 2020 is crazy. Yeah. But 2021's like, oh, you guys aren't even ready. Like this 2020 is nothing compared to this next decade. So this is 2025 right here. So we have Pluto, we have Pluto and Aqua, we have Neptune in Aries, and then we have Uranus in Gemini. These are the three pillars that are gonna bring in the new dawn of light. This is this is what us as I guess light workers or, or, or practitioners are yeah. working towards. Cause by the time that happens, what we're doing is mainstream. We, we've paved the way and really did our job as pillars and like we don't have to fight against this resistance so that's really this transition period from now to 2027 because we have saturn and neptune and aries which saturn and neptune and aries is manifesting the new spirituality it's 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 almost as if like okay. right now and then of course we see uranus 29 so 20 yeah 2025 it goes in but it's not officially going to be there oh no it is there 2025 so it's beautiful the the thing is um by the time we have your okay it does retrograde by the time we have uranus and gemini like 2026 coming in 2027 that's the last pillar so neptune and aries really if we think of neptune and pisces is like our transcendent selves neptune and aries i feel is like the ability to just turn on uh, our our spiritual transcendent selves and actually see what has been working behind the veil so all the all yeah. the de all the deception is going to come out the veil and we're going to actually see um maybe attachments entities i feel like it's going to make this a lot more mental cerebral and not just yeah, like bringing all the unconscious like sort of extrasensory perceptions into the conscious awareness like our actual like cerebral mind yeah, and not only that, if Pluto in Aqua is going to be the collective sense of telepathy that's going to oh, click yeah. on for everyone, then Neptune and Saturn and Aries is augmented reality. It's like, oh, we can all see these spirits that have been here the whole time. It's like, Ooh. it's like coming out the Pisces veil and like we can all see it now. And like, that's like the next 
um, wave or something. Wow. And Uranus is in Gemini, so now we're all telepathically connected. But like, yeah, no shit. Our our apps come out into reality or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> something crazy. Oh, but it, it'd be. I'm pretty sure by Uranus and Gemini, like the 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 production quality. You know how it takes a while to create um, videos and stuff. I think yeah. you just press a button and it's done. And then like we're all we're all able to. Yeah, almost like it. you you channel the antenna or energy from your brain into some kind of technology, and then you can just do it like mentally, just thinking about hey, it. I, yeah, I guess that's even genius. Yeah, maybe we can just move apps with our mind maybe something yeah. like that. Be- or with some kind of ai technology or even just from telekinesis um like glasses yeah, I, you wear yeah we're seeing a lot of people like a lot of healing centers come up a lot of like like especially especially when they try to do this whole you know mandatory vaccine shit the people that do get that they're gonna get so sick and they're gonna have so many so many problems that we're gonna be the ones like you know healing people yeah, because it's not like there aren't alternative. That's that's another thing they try and suppress alternative um, right. methods as right. if. And now with know. the censorship, like lots of people are starting to search for and find alternative means of communicating. Like we're we're yeah. seeing it everywhere. The censorship oh, yeah. is insane. And you know, I I I, I had a, I had a question for you. I want to know your your opinion about a couple of things. Um, I have I have uh, I have Bill Gates's chart up here, right? Yeah, you said you compared it to Hitler, and Hitler's a Taurus and Bill Gates a Scorpio. Which yeah, but but what I find interesting is that Bill Gates has a, a Pluto-Jupiter conjunction in Leo in his second house, in his birth chart. Oh, wow. Yeah. That makes sense, because Jupiter in his second house makes people super wealthy. But I didn't realize he had Pluto on Jupiter, too. Yeah, or it can make him super wealthy, or it can make him, like, the whole world want to fucking... Arrest him. him yeah yeah it's either yeah. it's intense either way and that's what yeah. we're seeing now that we have the and and you know we we only passed the first the first conjunction of the pluto jupiter conjunction here in capricorn so it'll be interesting to see because okay, you know like you've seen all this really nasty energy go towards him from seeing all this stuff it'll be yeah. interesting to see how that plays out but also he has chiron at zero degrees of aquarius in the seventh house Chiron at seven degrees Aquarius. At zero degrees of Aquarius. Oh, zero degrees. Oh, where Saturn and and Jupiter, Jupiter and Mars is. Damn. Right? So I, that makes sense now. Why he's been a major player, um, with with wanting to like Chiron everybody. Um, yeah, that yeah. Chiron energy is coming out, and 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 with the North Node conjunction. Just squaring Uranus, the then. Yeah. 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 Wow. And and his his North Node is conjunct Black Moon Lilith. Now, with you being a sort of a subject matter expert on Lilith, I mean, and that's in the fifth. Did house. you tell me that before? Did you ask me? I that did. Before? Okay, yeah, you did. You did. North yeah. No- well, I didn't know what to say before, but now I do remember so see, and I don't I'm not saying this is a fact. This is hearsay. I don't know how true this is, but like someone was saying I don't know if he's dealing with some kind of like child pornography accusations oh, or doubt it. some type of um someone said that he was I didn't take it seriously because I didn't I d I don't have proof of this. But and especially with the stuff about Bill Gates, I'm kinda chill on that right now because there's he's getting a lot of hate right now. Yeah. I just want to make sure um I'm not gonna doubt that he he might be up to something, but um I I think we gotta see once Jupiter goes through there, like you mentioned. Yeah. Jupiter that, going on top of that Chiron is gonna be very interesting. Yeah. That'll that'll that I think he's beta testing this year and next year we'll see what he really yep. is trying to do. I don't think he was expecting this pushback. No, no, I don't think so either. Yeah, and, I think they were all expecting give us the vaccines we needed, but they were right. expecting people to be like, uh, yeah, and even even like the African countries and and people all over the world, like all this shit's coming up, and and the 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 opposing information is coming up even faster than, than <laughs> they're out there. Like you're yeah. seeing that it's like things are getting deleted within two or three days that already have millions of views like yeah. they cannot shut it down fast enough they're trying to delete uh, and and see that's another thing that's weird like these platforms like youtube and facebook they were never meant to be sort they're not peer-reviewed journals so we don't go yeah. to them for sources so if i wanted to say whatever i should be able to say whatever without Pretty it being big. censored like a lot of this shit is just 
underhanded and happening so quickly you mm-hmm. forget like this is kind of weird it, i knew something was up when uh david ike his video got banned yeah. and like i'm not even i'm not even a fan of him like that like I'm, i wasn't trying to jump on that bandwagon but right. just, just to be objective here just in case anyone wants to say oh, okay you're biased towards him no nah, like i didn't i didn't even want to like openly support it but seeing his video get taken down was like well if he's not lying why are you gonna take down his video exactly he's, he's not breaking exactly. any guidelines he's not talking about child pornography he's not cursing you know what i'm saying right. so why are you taking his video why? Down? yeah it's, because the truth is dangerous to people that don't want people to hear it yeah no it's true yeah and, and I, um before we before i really jump into this because like it's amazing how this is all developing visaki's modality or or and um and or is that what it's called right now? Um, the Zox Modality is my old um, massage business name. That's okay. that's that's the the type of body work that I created. Gotcha. I created my own modality. And I know on Facebook it says Trinity Fitness. Yeah, but, uh, that that was my first uh, version uh, when I was working with Maru. Actually, uh, she she came up with that name, and I liked it. But I came to realize that if I want to brand myself properly, cause I've been, I've like tried and failed multiple times before things started to, you know, pop off. And I realized that I had to personally go through every step of the way and just sort of, you know, get into it myself. I guess I had some kind of resistances there that I had to, you know, push through. So once I pushed through it, I just, you know what, like initially, like I'll never forget when I did my very first ayahuasca ceremony back in 2014, ayahuasca, gave me the name spiritual bodybuilder so that is who you represent in this that that is your individuation in this life so and i've just going through my journey you know i've uh i i've embodied that the meaning of that all the way down to my core and so that's what I, that's what i'm bringing to the table now beautiful so so you're moving forward with spiritual bodybuilder yeah which is dope to be honest i think that's the dopest name i appreciate that man so so i know you just answered the question but like what really i was going to ask you what inspired you to, to really uh move forward with that but like what how has been the journey with that so far and for those who aren't aware like what do you help people with um i'm a i'm a i'm a healer of sorts um i i started with like body work and training and nutrition and uh going through my own experiences uh, i got certified in nutritional microscopy which is analyzing live and dry blood cells to identify imbalances in the body. And I, you know, I started working with ayahuasca and other plant medicines and I became a combo practitioner. And, uh, and then, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been into astrology since about 2012, 2013, but I did, I really got heavy into it in about 2015 when I was going through some like relationship issues, I wanted to understand myself better so I could be a better, you know, um, you know, significant other and, really see why these imbalances in my relationships happen. So then uh, her and I end up breaking up. And I just, that's when I sort of went into like obsessed mode. And I just started reading every book and studying and, and, and doing everything I could to figure it out. But it was always sort of just like a hobby to me. And I, and I, and, and I found that like, uh, I started coming into this like empathic um, channeling of energy uh, when I started doing body work, right? I remember I'd be working on somebody and I would get this imprint in my mind when I'm working on them but I used to think nothing of it like oh you know whatever that's that's stupid yeah. and then I would start to like it, it gets it gets stronger and stronger so I'd start to ask like these open-ended questions because I felt weird about it like they're gonna think I'm fucking weird or nuts or something but every time it, it like it, it it seemed to be true or something that they were going through so the more that I dug into it you know I had a I essentially I didn't trust this part of myself I think that's my Chiron energy Right. So the more I stepped into it and is, gained, is that in a Capricorn for you? Uh, my Chiron is in Taurus. It's in Taurus. Right, oh, yeah. Awesome. Right on the cusp. Uh, it's actually my first house. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep, yeah. Yeah. That Chiron ascended. Um, so so I, I came more into like trusting and understanding this intuitive guidance. And I started to realize, OK, I'm actually getting like psychic imprints through touching the human body. And I started to learn how to work with it more and more. And I started to realize, hey, I can actually control this and I can pull energy out of the body and move it around and help people face these these deep wounds that are essentially sitting in their body. I think that's the Chiron and the Taurus energy about you know the uh, the uh, physical body. And then when I started getting more confident about, about astrology, I remember like right when I met Maru, 
um, she sort of just dropped this seed in my brain. She's like, yo, you're a channel. You're meant to be out there doing this shit. What are you doing? And I was like, I don't know the fucking first thing about YouTube or doing this shit. So right around then is when I, when I, when I committed to just doing like a daily energy report every day. And I started making more videos and doing lives and dude, like I remember, I look back to my very first live and I was a fucking mess. Like I remember I was supposed to have Miss Olympia um, as, as my guest, my first one, I was going to do her chart on this live. I had this whole plan set up and everything. And she ghosted me like two hours before she said, Hey dude, I'm sorry. I can't make it I'm like, wow. So I freaking out and I called Maru and I was like, dude, what do I do here? She's like, just do it yourself. Go with oh, it. Lord. And I was like, it can't be that easy. <laughs> that is so Maru, by the way. Yeah, just right? so nonchalant. Like, oh, just. Yeah, like, whatever. <laughs> so, so I did it. And, you know, it, it was a real struggle for like the first three months, like, of me facing all these. I was so insecure about it. I didn't trust myself. I didn't believe in myself. Like, um, I was afraid people would think I'm nuts. And honestly, for the first like six months or so, I got a lot of hate. Um, you know, of course, I have a little really? crew out there. Shout out to my name hating crew. <laughs> and, but you know, everybody has haters and everybody, you know, like we all, and it, it really, I, I grew so much going through this process, learning that, you know, everyone has sees some, someone, you know, as an enemy in their story, if they're still going through shit, it yeah. isn't until you fully accept the experience that, okay, people come into our lives for a reason. And, and sometimes we teach people and sometimes we hurt people. And I mean, I don't think not many people out there intentionally go out to hurt people. Most people are just hurt people, hurt people. And they do it in the process of learning and discovering themselves. Right. So when I got to that point where I was just like, you know, I was hurt at the time. I'm not making excuses, but we came into each other's lives to teach each other something. And I appreciate learning that lesson. And I'm not going to hold any hate or any like bad vibes against anyone, um, no matter what they've done to me, because quite frankly, that's yeah. just hurting myself. And if they're a Libra, right? Huh? Udo Libra, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Yes. 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 Pluto and Libra. I had to think okay. about that for a minute. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So, uh, so learning, learning how to do that, um, it really set me free from this, from this, uh, you know, self-imposed like victim mentality prison that I was in. And then I just started doing the shit because I was like, "Fuck, this is sort of like like a therapy for me. It's like a, it's like my own little like video journal." And once I sort of stopped giving a fuck about what people thought or about right. what kind of feedback I got, and I just started being me and, and, and just chant. And that, that's when I got really solid and, you know, and, and believed in my channeling ability. And I just started doing it. And literally the day that I stopped giving a fuck was the day that people started responding to me. As I'm, and, uh -huh. and, then, and then when that happened, it was like, wow, this energy shit is real. Yeah. And then like, I've been taking that and applying that to every other area of my life. And it's just, it's just, I mean, you, it just goes deeper and deeper, but really what it comes down to is if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you're doing, if you believe in who you are, that belief is what's going to get other people to believe in themselves. Yeah. Through believing in you. It's that, it's that belief and that knowing within yourself that inspires people. And, and you, my bad, I was going to say, it's crazy how you can know that, but then still learn it again. Oh yeah, it's a constant. It's like it's like yeah. it's like spiritual weightlifting. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you gotta right. do it every day, man. That's why you know, spiritual bodybuilder, man. It's like you have to do the work. You have to get in there and feel the pain and experience it. And once you understand it, and 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 when you can communicate this with yourself, you can communicate it with everybody else. You know. So that's why looking at a chart, like I just I look at it. It's like my own energies and how they would sort of like interconnect and blend and. It's, and that's how it works for me. You know, I just, I seem to, I, I, maybe it's my Capricorn sun, but I need to understand like every corner, every little millimeter of the energy of it to be able to put it all together. Like if I have any missing dots or missing pieces, I just, I, I get lost in it. So yeah. that's where I finally got like the foundation of all these pieces within myself together. And now like I accept that chironic aspect of myself and I, uh, you know, we become BFFs, you know? Yeah. Like my buddy just hop, skipping, and jumping around the street. Which is and not easy to. No, no, yeah. that fucking energy, man. It's it's uh, the toughest thing I think anybody will do in their lifetime is to, is, is to face, face those energies. I remember a massage uh, therapist and I were speaking, and she put me on to how, in a lot of ways, massage therapy is 
like exorcisms because you the the trapped energy in people's bodies or like yeah. the demons you bring out and exercise. So I thought that was dope. And yeah, we we um we we hold on to emotions in our tissue through the medium neuropeptides. So basically, okay. the way it works is when we have a thought, it turns into emotion, right? And that emotional impulse goes from our brain into our through our central nervous system that travels through our fascia, and the fascia. It, it's it's sort of like the cloud, right? It holds on. It's like a database for all our emotional energy. And when we suppress our energies, our emotions, the fascia gets stiff and we get tense and, and, and it starts to block blood flow and oxygen flow and even nerve flow in the areas. That's why you see a lot of people when they turn get to like 30, 35, 40 years old, they all have these issues with their physical body because it's those parts of their body where they have suppressed emotions that have stopped the energetic and you know physiological flow. And then when you get body work, right, we we activate the parasympathetic nervous system and then we flush that tissue. It's sort of like an oil change for that tissue. And when you flush it and you bring life back into it, that life activates those suppressed emotions again. And if you have enough suppressed emotions, you will have a, you will you will get rid of it through what's called an SER, a somato emotional release, which usually comes in the form of like shaking, trembling, or crying. Or I've even seen one dude get really pissed and like put a punch a hole in the wall. I've oh, seen wow. some people um, laugh. I've seen a couple chicks like almost have an orgasm. Like it's this kundalini energy essentially that it just it rises up and when you're when you're mentally like when your soul is ready to let go of that shit and when you've had enough suffering and enough pain it just it, 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 it can explode in some pretty fascinating ways and i know like that happened to me um when i first started you know getting body work and learning how to slow my mind down i had a two and a half hour long ser when i was in massage school and that's when i realized like wow there's there's something to this there there's something much deeper here and it's 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 really beautiful. I've 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 probably I've seen a couple hundred SCRs from people over the years working on them. It's it's a pretty fascinating thing to see. Mm. What's an SCR? A somato emotional release. Somato so, emotional release. Yeah, okay. Somato is body is, emotional. Is that my what's myofascial release? Myofascial release is is um is opening up that stuck tissue. So through do through doing myofascial release work, you can create somato emotional releases. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah. uh, that's all very fascinating. Once again, like I really do, I really am grateful too because I know a lot of, um, um, I, I know a lot of of development for body work on my end. I can also attribute to your direction too, and just you know attitude and um, the right mindset. So one thing that I'm also very grateful uh, for you about and, and respect about you is that especially one major feature about these times, the past decade, you have all these conspiracy theories, you have all these, um, beliefs, you have all these, um, you know, people just saying what, you know, what they think is real about life. And now it's like, you have to live that. Now you're having to make decisions that's like, okay, well, if you really believe it, now you have to kind of like, you know, live that. So I don't consider what you believe as conspiracy theories because you present them in you, with ways that bring in facts. It's not just kind of like you're you're grasping at straws, like you're, you're bringing in real people, real stories. So, um, and 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 it's definitely been, you know, especially with with what's going on now and the whole topic of let's just say you know vaccinations or or this pandemic i've definitely been i'm definitely around both or or multiple viewpoints it's people who um are in the field of medicine who who administer vaccines and feel like there's nothing wrong with it and then people who have their their child has gotten autism and yeah you know, they they feel like they've been wronged by the system and, and they have a different story and account to it so definitely definitely really fascinated about this there's really no there's really no proof or there's really no um f studies or findings that can link vaccinations to autism but then at the same time you know it it's very easy it's very simple to consider that most of these studies could be suppressed or perhaps not necessarily acknowledged too so there, are, there actually are um quite a few studies linking them um uh, vaccines to autism 
uh, in the way they so these uh, they couldn't they couldn't study the the vaccine per se. They they studied the adjuvants that were inside the vaccines, okay. and they and and also to Alzheimer's too. Um, uh, Alzheimer's uh, patients, as well as people with autism, they have a much, much higher amount of aluminum in their brain, in the, in the gray matter. Wow. And, and this aluminum, you know, uh, is, is heavy metal toxicity. It's neurotoxic. It actually uh, shuts down the neural firing um, in the brain. So like when they're younger, it creates uh, um, almost like a chaotic hyperactivity. Um, think of like, th think of like if you have a... Um, if if you have like a stereo system in your car, right, and you put like a like a woofer with an amp, and you hooked it up yourself, and you just kind of jerry rigged it together, and the and like the wires aren't exactly perfectly, you know, connected and protected. Yeah. Right. So if you like, if you're driving and you're and you're banging, you know, banging your stereo, and you hit a bump, it might like like you know freak out for a second and then come back in, right? Yeah. Well, it's the same concept with aluminum in the brain. When there's whenever there's any kind of stress, right? It it shocks it around and it, and it, 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 it sends the connections to places that they're not supposed to go. Mm. Right. So every time that happens, the, the natural brain response too is to activate more fight or flight biochemical responses. Right. Yeah. Because they're afraid, like what the hell's going on? And if that keeps getting worse, that could lead to um, seizures. Okay. Right? Um, but all, but what they normally do is, you know, they go to the doctor before the, it gets that bad. The doctors prescribe medication to suppress that. So now you're suppressing that, that activity in the body. So it might help a little bit with that, but then it's going to have a ripple effect in the rest of the body and start to shut the gut down and start to it, make, make issues with all the organs. And then before you know it, dude, like, I mean, it's, it's, it's so sad. There's so many people um, in our society that are just dependent on pharmaceutical drugs and just to get them healthy or better from that, you would have to do like a one to two year protocol for like properly detoxifying the body and the mind. It's absolutely scary where that stuff has gone. Um, but we're also seeing now too, like all these studies and all these documentaries and all this information coming out that, you know, has some kind of common sense facts, like look, putting all these dots together, look at this information. It's completely legit. Have you ever heard of crooked theory? Cricket theory? Crooked. Crooked. Oh, crooked. wait. Is that like from Crooked Eye? Uh, I don't know. Not the okay. No, I haven't heard of Crooked Theory. Okay, so Crooked Theory is um this this doctor created this hypothesis that actually makes a lot of sense. He says that all disease comes down to one specific thing, and if you think about it, you know, the diseases that we see nowadays they are we didn't see them thirty years ago. Mm. right even well diabetes didn't come around until insulin was insulin was created how I, interesting i know that that's right? yeah back in the 1930s okay wow. um autism was not known of 30 years ago mm. children didn't have diabetes up until about about uh, until this generation okay. um and mental that health makes illness, sense. that makes sense right gut issues allergies like um, would you say that's because like um before up to this generation there wasn't that much fatty foods or fast food that you can eat like that. I, I I'd say maybe that's a contributing factor and there are many contributing factors, but, but the real issue is all the um, genetically modified organisms, pesticides and heavy metals that are in our experience between vaccines that have heavy metals there. They spray heavy metals in the atmosphere, right? Like yeah. uh, uh, what the hell do you call them? Um, uh, chemtrails. Yeah, right? they put I mean, uh, we have fluoride in our toothpaste, we have like any any kind of um, lotion yeah. or stuff that you put on your body has some kind of heavy metal in it. All right, oh, makeup uh, too. I heard makeup has makeup heavy metal. Is, is another nasty one. All right, even like some bo like body washes that have like fragrances, things like that. All these chemicals, they interrupt the signaling in the body. Right. So we're, we're getting hit with these metals and these and these pesticides and chemicals from every direction. Um, and your body can only handle so much. It gets to a saturation point where it starts to throw the systems off. The immune system starts to speak incorrectly to the lymphatic system and to the gut. And now, you know, you're, you're secreting different enzymes that aren't supposed to be secreted. And it's, 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 it's a domino effect, but the crooked theory is, uh, says that, you know, over time, you know, when we have all these, uh, heavy metals 
um, ingested into our body, right? They sit there um, and the immune system will attack it because it's a foreign invader. And the, so the white blood cells will surround these heavy metals, but they can't do anything with it because it's not organic material, right? So these white blood cells just basically clump around it, around these molecules, okay? Then when, when some kind of stress or trauma happens, right? When stress or trauma happens, the immune system does what? It signals from help for everywhere. Come help me. I have a cut. I have a bruise. I broke something. I need help. So what, so what do those white blood cells do that are around the heavy metals? They shuttle to the area of the trauma. Now, that area of trauma could be in the hip. It could be in your brain. It could be in an organ. It could be anywhere, right? But you'll, you'll notice if you start doing research that after every trauma or significantly stressful experience that you start having problems in a particular area of your body or your mind. And it's because these heavy metals and these, and these, and these toxins, they, they shuttle to these areas and then they clump together. They form like crowds, right? Now the immune system can't do anything with it. And it's not organic. Right. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a foreign toxin. Oh. Right. So now say this foreign toxin is sitting in this healed, you know, bone or joint in your elbow, right? After you broke it. Well, now you're going to start having arthritis in there. You're going to have to start like have serious inflammation problems because the immune system cannot read this area properly anymore. Cause there's, cause there's a, uh, there's interference from the heavy metals and they can't move anywhere. And every time you experience a new trauma or a new, um, or some kind of new stress, it digs it in deeper like a tick. Wow. Right? So think about, I mean, as you get older, you get, you know, it's more stressful or yeah. you have like some kind of surgery or injury, right? That's gonna just make it worse and worse. And then what do the doctors do? They give you more medication, the more, more you know, if you get bit by a dog, you have to get a tetanus shot, right? Or, you know, pushing more vaccines and you get more and more toxins and poisons mm -hmm. put into your body so mm -hmm. that these more stressful situations get more and more difficult to deal with. Then mm -hmm. by the time you're 60, you're on 20 different medications. You're fucking, you're, you feel like complete shit all the time. You're suffering and you're just living off of this system. And now people have to take care of you for the rest of your life because right. you're kind of broken. That makes sense. Right? That and that is the sense. process. That is how they keep their people sick. We have Slowly sick care, not health care. We do. You're right. And right? It's, yeah. But now it's interesting that we're seeing all these vibrational tools and these like sound healing tools, like the frequency and vibration of different, of different sounds and, and different vibrations will melt tumors. It'll, it, it can actually that's disperse fascinating. heavy metals. Like wow, that's now, now you have to be, you have to be careful, especially with heavy metals. Those are a unique issue because the body still has to purge it out. So and if it spreads, if it's concentrated in one area, then spreads through the body, you can get very sick. Just like uh, people that have mercury fillings in their teeth, they have to do a very special process because if they let all that mercury um, um, soak into in, into the mouth, you can die. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's or brain damage or many, many different things. Yeah. Right. So, and I think that th th these are all aspects of what functional medicine does. Mm -hmm. functional medicine will identify okay like dude so many people have gut issues these days like you know um uh, irritable bowel, sy bowel syndrome or chronic candida or they can't digest food or even like ulcers and cancers that are growing in these areas because the gut is a second brain and all these poisons also shift the ph in the body so when the ph is off like that shifts like it, a cell has to be at a certain ph to function properly right Mm -hmm. or mitochondria to create energy and do their thing. When yeah. the pH is shifted in either direction, that that um, that will inactivate certain enzymes and cellular functions and it will activate other ones, yeah. right? So with all these things too, it's shifting the pH in our body. That's why that's why the body's pH is so incredibly important. That's why like Dr. Sebi, he pushed he pushed the alkaline diet. That's yeah. why but then again, it, it it comes down to like now the food supply is going to be shortened again. Another, um, I think that's a Uranus and Taurus thing. Sorry, that's a, a the, yeah. Meat is shorted right now, and that is totally Uranus and Taurus. Yeah. So oh so my bad. You, you know what else? You know what I felt it was too. I What's felt that? it was also Jupiter and Capricorn because Jupiter is at its fall in Capricorn. Okay. And so instead of having an expansion, you're probably having a famine. 
but I think it's I think it's also Uranus and Taurus for sure too. That's yeah, well, and Jupiter's conjunct Pluto too, so that makes it like way more yeah, intense. Definitely, that's a good point. And, um, but uh, but so I heard now. Of course, this is just conjecture. I I, I don't know how true this is, but um, because of the meat shortage uh, in the world, they're they're planning on um, starting to create this new kind of meat that is made via uh, on a 3d printer from stem cells so basically cloning meat wow um and all they have to do is is put uh, like you know a series of um of amino acids together really to 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 create the cells for meat but here's the creepy part i've also heard that um that they may use up to 30 percent human human meat for the meat wow which is very i mean and, and with all this stuff that like has come out about like this satanic, like underground child, like adre adrenochrome, adrenochrome yeah. eating people and stuff. It's it, it the Madonna. Honestly, it's, it's, it's getting the point. Like I might just, I might just give being vegan a shot again. All the vegans are like, yes, the meat short. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. We've been waiting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, and, and the, but, but then on the same token too, like um, all these big corporations, for all these, you know, uh, plants and um, and uh, uh, vegetables and fruits, they own all the patents to all these fucking seeds, and they're all who knows what's what's not GMO anymore. I didn't even know they were patents to seeds. Oh yeah, they have patents Great. for everything, bro. Wow. And yeah. So so now, like, we're gonna how are we gonna be able to find like actual true organic because we're gonna end up having to grow our own stuff they're throwing away millions of pounds of fruits and vegetables too i mean everything's getting thrown out that's crazy man yeah that's so crazy so it's it's gonna and and you know what's even more interesting so i was uh when when you brought up that chart for 2023 i think uranus was at 16 degrees of uh taurus um yeah. when when hitler came into power uranus was at 20 degrees of taurus yeah. Damn. So a lot of synchronicities going on and here. I know 2024 is going to be when Uranus is 23 degrees. Um, it's going to be 20. That's right during the Pluto, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Pluto return, right? I was going to say that's also, yeah, that's going to be around the Pluto return. That's like uh, after it, but that's also at the last year of Trump's uh, second term. Oh shit! Into the next uh, 2024 elections is going to be the most revolutionary elections ever known to mankind. So, what do you I'm, think about? Uh, do you think that our country is going to go to war, man? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's the crazy thing because I didn't real. So, shout out to someone who called it out before. I was skeptical at first, but the the Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto conjunction are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Oh, so shit. that cycle has enacted that. Yeah, like it's it's here. We got pestilence. Wait, Jupiter, which, first. which one would Jupiter be? Gluttony. Ju Jupiter would actually be famine because it's in really? Capricorn. So Jupiter that's supposed to bring abundance. Now in, in its fall, we're getting the opposite of that. Pluto would be pestilence, Saturn death, and then um, a war would be Mars. You could alternatively say Pluto's death and Saturn's pestilence, but we, we wanna look, we wanna say Pluto's pestilence because each of the Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions we had came with oh, a yeah. pandemic. And so Jupiter is expanding the Plutonian pestilence to, to Fuck, man. people to get yeah so th there's that and then also um my bad what did you ask before that before um you said what did what is jupiter or mars i forgot what you you asked before i just slipped my mind right now but yeah uh, the, if it comes back comes back well i don't remember definitely we we got oh yes 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 so like you said, like we uh, concluded, Saturn or Mars is going to be war. War. The, the the thing about war is we're already in war. Yeah. It's just as the the American people or any people will only think that we're at war based on what the news shows you. So once the media shows you that this happened in this country, we're at war. But there are covert actions happening behind the scenes. We oh, yeah. only know what we're reported. But, you know, it's safe to say that war is probably already happening. It's just not being reported to us. It's being suppressed. But 
but there's war war coming there's and i don't think it's world war as much as it is a civil world war because what we're gonna have is a total it's it's a temporary anarchy where the systems that govern us aren't gonna have that power for a small amount of time and so it's gonna be a war to regulate to regulate this sense of anarchy all around the world and i think that's really what we're being prepared for and I think that's really why these abilities and like the psychic power is awakening to defend us from this mini chaos that's going to happen. But I'm, I'm glad you mentioned war because um, a lot of a lot of previous wars, like uh, I know Jupiter and Sag is, and Uranus and Taurus are, are indicators that happened in previous wars. But like, um, yeah, it's it's one of the hugest wars of all time that we're getting uh, prepared for because only because it's a collective one. And yeah. unlike before, internet connects everything. So like, it's going to be real time. Um, it's going to come out of nowhere. I think it's going to be Saturn square Uranus. That's going to be yeah. this next war period for the next seven years. So that's going to be interesting too. Magic wars for Wait, sure. But for the next seven years? Yeah, my bad. Six, five years because Uranus is going to be in Taurus until 2026. So, oh, my bad. But it's be square the, uh, for... A long two years time. you're right Holy well the, shit. the square no i was the square is only going to last for like two years because saturn's not going to be in aquarius past 2023 oh okay okay well still a two-year square yeah and then and then that's that segue that's, a, that's an active pluto. conflict that's right a right one. yeah and then and then pluto when it gets to 29 degrees of capricorn oh, i yeah. mean fuck dude that's and, gonna bring all the shit out and that's what people need to get ready for we're yeah. getting ready for like chaos. We're getting ready for like a world event that's going to take everything that's happened in 2020 is a sneak peek. And I'm not saying yeah. this to fear people. No. It's, we've been seeing symptoms of this. So it's right. it's kind of inevitable. This is going to lead up. To yeah, the I think the important thing right now is to really like realize how important it is to stand in your own power and stand in your own truth. Yeah. You know, if you don't take responsibility for your life now, you're going to get sucked into the victim machine that that the powers that be are trying to, you know, um, dictate control over. And they're going to make it so that on the surface, it appears that you don't have a choice, but you always have a choice. And if you're standing in your own truth, that's where that choice is going to be is going to reveal itself. And you might have to, you know, stand up and like fight back. Be like, you know, what? I don't think so. I'm a human being. I have rights. And you're not going to, you know, and, and you're not going to push me around. And the people that allow themselves to get pushed around, that's when you're, you, it, that's where the saying, like, you either stand for something or you fall for everything. Right. Right. Like, what you stand for now, it has to be bigger than yourself. Like, there is a big, big fucking mission going on right now. And we're all being recruited by the universe to stand in our own responsibility and power so that when the time comes, the more people that do stand in their own power and resist the control dynamic that is trying to suppress our abilities and who we are, that's where we win. That's where, you know, that's why we're here in this incarnation right now. But the the difficult thing is every time you call it out as an enemy, they just turn your rhetoric around against you and call you a, a conspiracy theorist. And it's hard to identify the enemy because they make us fight each other. So well, I, and well, that's why the point or the attention shouldn't be focused on the enemy. It right. should be focused on your own love and truth of yourself facts Very right true. so that so that way you stand in that truth and you're not projecting anything onto them but yeah. you can still stand and be like no this is me this is what i believe in and and you are not going to violate my boundaries basically. right so that this right. year is just so fascinating we had um we had <laughs> iran conflict we had oh that that, that was this year that was this that year. feels like, like two years ago <laughs> right right because we we had an australia billions of animals burned kobe oh, and Gigi man. died uh coronavirus distancing murder hornets the year it's murder the, hornets <laughs> it's the year of the rat and snitch nine got out of jail and it's glorifying being a snitch and a rat and it's breaking internet um it's breaking internet um records are you serious? It's charting record. Six nine is still hot. He's still trolling. He's distracting everybody uh, because they wow. want to be distracted, and that's not even conspiracy. But like, yeah, the, there's people who are saying that oh, mandatory vaccines are illegal, but 
you know, there's someone who I know, um, he can't go back to work if he doesn't get vaccinated. And, and that's what, that's their loophole. They're like, okay, well, it's not gonna be mandatory, but you can't go to a concert, you can't go to the gym, you can't get the airport. Without I think it'll be riots if people can't fly. Oh yeah. Unless they get vaccinated. So I, I don't think they're expecting that pushback too. Cause no. I mean, they didn't expect but, but did you also notice that there are certain, like I saw this video where they're making like old Walmarts into these makeshift like camps. They look like internment camps or like, you know, I was, um, I was deployed to, to Guantanamo Bay for a year um, when I was in the military. And the way that it's, it's sort of like, looks like a temporary prison facility. And mm -hmm. the facilities that I saw in this video mm -hmm. looked exactly the fucking same. That's crazy. guard towers with different areas for like these open looking cells wow. where people are able to talk to each other, but they can't like they, they're separating families. I mean, we're already seeing like down in Australia, like police are separating mothers from their children Good just for speaking out about the truth. Like, yo, know, the shit's going down, man. I don't know if you heard about um, the Trace Act. I didn't even hear about it. But yes. Is that the 6666 fucking um, I don't, patent I'm number? I'm not entirely sure the details, but Riza Islam had posted how there was a petition going around to kind of stop that. Yeah. And they got to 700,000 signatures and shut down the petition. So they shut down the position petition. Like they, they can't how do they shut, it, shut down a petition. Exactly. You can't like, you can't find it. So he made up a new one so that they can get new petitions. Cause he said that that basically proved that they trying to, they're, they're so 700,000. That should be more than K. Yes. And they, and they shut it down. So like, you can't even find it. Like they took the petition and I've never seen anything like that before. Like, I didn't even know you could do that. So, oh, shit. so I wouldn't have taken something like that seriously too. But now if they're shutting it down, why are you shutting it down? Like what, yeah. why? Right, it's kind of weird, you know what I mean? So it, 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 it it's stuff like that that wouldn't make me take it, it and that's the same thing that happened with Trump too. Like, I I wouldn't have taken ser like I, I wasn't really for or against Trump at first, but yeah, seeing, me all this, seeing all this diff, disinformation, like if he's so bad, why are you lying about him? Why do you have to bring up all this disinformation? If someone is so bad, why don't you tell the truth? So that's made me realize a lot of the fake news he was saying was really fake news but but outside of that you know like as you said like the or as you have as you pointed out too like there there is this whole like it does look like mandatory vaccinations at some level i mean not mandatory but like it some of some people won't be able to get a job or go to school or fly mm -hmm. and whatnot so what do you what do you feel about that dynamic as far as like um, I feel like I feel like that's going to be the catalyst for this revolutionary war, or at least one of the biggest catalysts. Yeah, because like, look, if you wh whether you're pro or an I, I don't like even using those words, like, like if you believe that they're good, then go get them. Right. Cool. Right. That 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 just like you want to wear a mask. If you want to wear a mask, cool. That's your belief. You should have the freedom to do that if you want. You, you should have also freedom. have the freedom to not do it if you don't want, because right. because each there's no ultimate truth right now like and really it comes down to what you believe and what we believe is being is being pushed by propaganda so that's where like both the narratives of both these sides of shit i think they're all they're all um they all have an agenda and that's why and i keep saying this like we have to come back to our center to ourselves yeah, and, stop and like disconnect from all the shit out there because yeah. right now the only way that we know what direction to go is from in here from yeah. our heart True that's that. it if you're not listening to your heart you're gonna get lost in one of, in one of the different fucking thousands of rabbit holes that are going on right now so so you listen to your heart you follow it one step at a time and you have to be willing to go into that unknown and that is the dark night of the soul essentially yep. going into the unknown and having trust and faith in your own heart so so many people don't trust themselves that's why you hear a lot of people say oh i don't trust them i don't trust them we don't trust them because you don't trust how you feel about it because every time you make a decision based on what you think you trust it turns out shit because you're living in fear so you have to tra you have to traverse the own fear based energies within yourself and it's just you can get so lost in it and that's exactly why you know the people that i'm i'm a firm believer that experience is the best educator right so we have to follow our experience, but you know, our, 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 our truth 
or our heart is being thrown in our face right now to expose and show us where we're tripping our own selves up, especially with the Venus retrograde square over to uh, to uh, Neptune. And it's making shit real fucking confusing right now. So, oh, yeah. Like, we can't be making any fucking long-term plans and shit right now. We got to stay in the present moment. And, and and you know, we're going to be tested and challenged on every level right now. That's just where we're at. But really, if, if it comes down to it, if you believe you're ready, then you're ready. If you believe that you're not, then you're not. The placebo effect is in full motherfucking effect right now. Oh, yeah. Right? Because your belief system is, is the ultimate placebo. Whatever you believe, you achieve. So these whole, these whole, like, like I talked to my mom earlier today and she lives in Massachusetts and she's telling me like everybody, like it's, it's bad or like everybody around there is listening to this, this mainstream narrative and you go to a store and people are screaming at each other with right. like masks and shields on and shit. Like, you know, six feet, you know, like how do you hand somebody money or like and that's another thing they're trying to do away with a cashless society have you noticed that a lot of places don't take fucking cash right now they're only debit card and they're saying oh well six feet you know you can do a debit thing over here you know but if you hand me cash it has the it has the rona on the cash like come on dude <laughs> like, if, anybody, if anybody knows how a virus works it can it, it, it needs a host to survive it cannot live on anything that's not organic as soon as it is not attached to something organic, it dies. Like the the virus. Yes, that's just so. And they were even saying on the news that it's surviving for six to twelve days on shoes. It, that is physiologically impossible. It's not possible. It, it, that's not how viruses work. It's like if you think of a parasite, right? A virus is actually a parasite. A parasite by itself is dormant. It comes alive when it has a host. But a virus, it doesn't have a complete DNA. It attaches itself like a USB cord into like a computer and it needs that DNA to intertwine itself into it. All right. So if you think about other viruses, think, um, you know, AIDS, can you sneeze on someone and get AIDS? No. Uh, think of hepatitis C. It's in the liver. Can you get hep hepatitis C by like, you know, giving someone a kiss? No. All right. Like, uh, uh, herpes yeah okay can you get herpes by you know like kissing someone that doesn't have an outbreak no you need to have organic connection to it in okay. order to in order for you to get it so uh, but now of course just a fear alone if you already have a weakened immune system just a fear alone <clears throat> is creating more stress hormones in your body that is stressing and suppressing the immune system so if you already have a weak one like that stress and that fear in and of itself, it's sort of like people have cancer, right? Cancer is actually not that difficult to reverse, but the belief system, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, right? So people that get cancer, now they believe that they have a death sentence. So now they go to these support groups where everybody that has cancer, all they talk about is having cancer and living with cancer and being broken and fucked up and just be preparing to die. And you ingrain this belief system in your head I personally helped two people reverse cancer. Wow. Okay, like when you balance your body out and you work with the vibration and bring everything to alignment and heal your body, the, the body will heal itself. But we got to get rid of these belief systems because it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, no. And, and I, and once again, I think that's another contributing factor of what's going to like, you know, really accelerate a lot of progress here like like the addressing of people's beliefs yeah. and I'm, I'm just reading right now the fda has a halted coronavirus testing program backed by bill gates which is yeah kind of good <laughs> um <laughs> and 2020 is so crazy that j electronica dropped an album and ufo footage was released and no one cares and and the rat is the king of new york which is even crazier like like i don't know what else is gonna happen but yeah let's... it's it everything is like expect the unexpected right now basically really anything can honestly happen it's it's ridiculous yeah and and with um i i know uh chiron and black and Lilith have been conjunct on and off for like this last month and a half too i think they're conjunct exactly right now at eight degrees of aries Oh, so so Lilith is in Aries right now. Yeah. That's interesting. 
that's, that's gonna definitely so sad. that's thrown another like layer of like vulnerability and and manipulation like manipulated energy out there right did you hear about when these holistic doctors were getting murked off too behind the scenes like there was this um they called it a conspiracy theory at the time, but there was this thought that holistic doctors were getting murdered. Um, oh yeah, back to back to back. But I mean, obviously, there's there hasn't been a follow up on that, so I guess much of it. Yeah, that uh, that that had been happening for years, man. Um, a lot of doctors that were uh, creating. Um, I know there there was this one biohacker out of uh, Silicon Valley that that uh, said he created a cure for uh, general herpes. And he injected himself with this peptide, I think it was, um, speaking in front of a whole bunch of people because he had it and he said he was going to heal. And uh, and and uh, that dude got offed. Wow. I um, believe Se- Sebi was one of the people who got Dr. Off. Sebi. Yep. Yeah. He had a cure for AIDS and he and he and he proved it in court. Well, see, that's the thing. If you look up the court hearing, because you hear him, too, saying he's proven in court. If you look up the court hearing, it actually says that they that it look, says that in court they ruled that he was a fraud and that the court ruling um the cure he had wasn't a cure to me i don't believe that that means it's he still didn't cure it to me that just means that the supreme court said that we don't we don't like your cure we don't c- acknowledge it as real right but, but wait, now wait. i'm starting to think that was changed too because but i'm pretty he, sure he did win that case yeah i i heard that he uh, he had 72 um 72 people uh, come in all all that he helped join. right and they if all you look it up him. now yeah. you can't find it now they're gonna say that he lost and, and that's kind of weird to me too and then nipsey was gonna yeah, be up, up and then he died yeah so you know there's just kind of stuff that's really weird and and yeah. so like you can talk about suppression of information and people can just wave it off but neptunes and pisces like that's what happens when neptunes and pisces that fog that like yeah. wears the truth of Gemini in the site and things can happen, you know, <laughs> under the scenes. So it's it's just really uh, fascinating. But you know what? The North Node's in Gemini and uh-huh. the most truth ever is going to be exposed over the next oh, yeah. year, over the uh, from the past. And so I'm 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 OK with that. And let's let's step into the three questions game. But what were you going to say? Okay. I was going to say, what uh, what do you feel about the South Node being on the Galactic Center? Like, wait, is there anything? <laughs> Significant a million dollar question. First of all, shout out to all of y'all who have Uranus, Neptune, and Sag. It's you guys, <laughs> it's you guys that are going to expose the truth because it's going to unlock all that. And you and it's like everyone has a piece of the puzzle. And I think that's another thing that the dark forces aren't expecting because they're dividing us. Well, we're going to come together because we have to. And then it's just the discovery is going to come together that wouldn't you know. have if that didn't happen. So. It's funny. It's funny you just say that because I have Neptune conjunct Mercury in Sagittarius. What degree? I will have to look. That's a, okay. So I, that makes me realize now. Well, I remember a long time ago you said that, like you closed your eyes and the universe was showing itself to you, and and I thought, okay, that's totally Moon and Aqua, but now that's totally also Neptune and Mercury in Sag, which is like super clairvoyance. That's amazing, though. <laughs> Um, and just super psyched. Yeah. But, yeah. And now that the South Node is going to be uh, crossing over there, that's a uh, wow. Okay. And yeah, it being on the galactic center, I think is going to really reset the percent. And it's see, this is the first time it's on the galactic center squaring Neptune. So it's like the whole world is going to see Ooh, the truth. That's right. If you think about it, everyone's being suppressed right now. So an event is going to happen where the whole world is going to see through the illusion on accident. And then it's going to be like, someone has some Lucy, you got some explaining to do like <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> this glitch wasn't it's, supposed uh, to happen. Uh, eight, 18 and 20 degrees. Uh, Mercury's oh, at 20 nice. degrees. Neptune's at 18 degrees. My son's at 20 degrees. Gemini. That's awesome. Oh shit. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So yeah, that's going to, I would say within 2020, you'll, you'll come into unlocking. That's near the galactic center. So, Ooh, yeah, let's get it, baby. Okay, so three questions game. So, um, these could be three about questions. anything you could ask about anything. And, um, let's see, you go first. So, you'll ask me, I'll answer, and then I'll ask you, you answer, and then we'll go two more rounds. I'll ask you, and then okay, yes, sir. 
Oh man. Do I have any kind of restrictions on what kind of questions I can ask? Nope. No restrictions. You can ask anything. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't have any more uh, spiritually pregnant children. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is the craziest experience you've had um, in regards to your fan base? question I mean, you have a, you've, you've had a couple yeah and i thought you're gonna ask something else like the craziest experience i've had every day is a crazy experience to me to be honest. well yeah i know so that's why i get be a little more specific um i mean i've been sent nudes but that's not too crazy uh unsolicited i would say that's about I would say really the craziest thing that's happened y'all have heard about of the the I mean it's funny because they're both Pisces so someone has like come to my door that was pretty crazy no shit yeah I don't know if you heard about that but like no. yeah someone traveled from Portugal Spain or from Portugal yeah uh came to my apartment door i don't know how she found it and was like hey i love you like you know like came through oh you could tell she was like <laughs> she didn't know what she was doing was like super sketch which made it how how, how old was she she had to have been like 37 or like uh, yeah she had to have been like mid was she like maybe 40. schizophrenic or was she hot <laughs> you gonna have to be the judge, bro. I'm gonna have to show you. <laughs> but I would say the other the other lady um who also came to my apartment, she just never came to my door, but like yeah, got her spiritually pregnant. Um I almost got to go on Dr. Phil. Oh that. man, whatever happened to that? They never got back at me. I I don't know if they were able to reach her or not, and that might have been why, but oh man. Yeah, that, that would have been fucking hilarious. That would have been hilarious. Um, <laughs> but other than that, I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say that. I mean, it's cool because there's gonna be a lot more crazy experiences. But um, definitely say that's been the craziest so far. Just going out uh, to the bar and then getting a tap on my shoulder, and it's her. I was like, oh, you found me. <laughs> All right. I should have never posted on Facebook that I was going to be here. But okay. Wow. <laughs> I mean, and I don't feel so bad about it because it just makes me wonder, like, if I, you know, imagine if it was the other way around. I was a woman and I was a dude. Like, I'm sure, I guess, now I can see how it might be scary if, if women are getting stalked by dudes like that. Yeah, dude. Right, but you know, it is what it is. Um, charge it to the game. My question. <laughs> charge it to the game. My question for, for you comes from Matthew Johnson. He says, a, a daily basis, on a daily basis, what do you do to keep your body balanced? Well, um, I'm highly intuitive about that. So I uh, normally, the first thing I do, I get up and I go for a run. Um, you know, really, to like i'm not in super great shape right now compared to how i used to be right but i'm 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 more working on balance and i think we all we go through these phases where we have different aspects of ourselves that we have to work on right so keeping the basics like fundamental and consistent like eating good quality foods don't don't binge on junk food yeah. um but you know having that like for me getting up and going for that run in the morning is my staple like if i don't get up and do that then i sort of feel sluggish and shit for like half a day how long do you uh, run huh how long do you run in the morning uh, like 15 to 30 minutes not and and oh. then and then I'll, I'll like go and i'll stretch for like another 30 15 to 30 minutes depending on how i'm feeling if i'm feeling good i'll keep running i didn't even know you can stretch for that long for 15 minutes oh yeah dude what do you think yoga is man yoga is just oh, stretching right. with intention getting your body in these different positions you can stretch it like i do fascial stretching but but i i sort of stretching for me is like meditation too i i, I get in the in into the breath work and i set my intentions for the day um and you know i have my days where i'm off and 
and so you really kind of have to learn to listen to your body. But honestly, um, I, I feel like this is a little bit different for everybody because what works for me won't necessarily work for you. And that's actually why, why I created the opportunity <sighs> on my website because I created a, a, a four phase coaching protocol that, that walks everybody through discovering their own structure for their own life so that they can, you know, create that on their own. And then, you know, and accountability, um, format so that we can all keep each other accountable when you're when you're ready bro i'm ready to get your ass in shape dude yeah let's do it yeah you join my join my community man we'll fucking we'll we'll combine forces that's that's what i want to do um that's what i want to start doing like start my day off with a run or a jog and my plan was 15 minutes too just like we're in a half mile yeah dude just back. that's just to get the blood flowing get some like go outside with no shirt on man get some of that vitamin d in your in your skin you know like get that fresh air that fresh air is so fucking important so so you recommend running shirtless i do okay cool yeah i'll do that then that's what's up yeah and then if you want to get more creative or like crazy you know you can go try some butthole sunning <laughs> oh shit <laughs> is that like butthole um, tanning I'm I'm kidding by the way, but, oh. uh, yeah, but uh, JP Sears made a hilarious video. Oh. On it's like <laughs> basically you getting in like yoga poses, like <laughs> your asshole at the sky to to you know they say. Oh um, my god! Uh, brown eye is a new third eye. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he's right? just too ultra spiritual for me. <laughs> yeah, that's a little, that's a little yeah. bit beyond my scope of of uh, comfort. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That was I hope that I, I hope that answered the question. Um, oh, definitely. It's a good balance and blend of like, you know, physical activity, like nutritional activity and um, emotional activity. You just got to find you just got to be consistent and, you know, find your your grounding, your foundation. And um, and of course, right now, gyms aren't really open anywhere. So I, I went back during this, you know, uh, lockdown. I've just been doing my like my old military style, you know, push ups, pull ups sit-ups, you know, flutter kick, shit like that. I mean, there's not much that you can do, but but there's not much you can do, but there is always something that you can do. Yeah. That's what's yeah. up. Okay. So my next question, um, what is your next step, man, in your, in your evolution, in your growth process? Oh, great question. So um, July is the last month of, I got two summer classes, July. I uh, should be done August, God willing. Um, I won't have any more classes. That's and hard. right. And so the next step for me is to just um, build more presence. I, I got to um, I can finally focus fully on my YouTube channel and also curating some online courses. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I, I want to get that done and have a physical office with which I can do meetups and we could definitely start, you know, letting people know we're out here. And And that's, and I can definitely help you with that too. That's what's up. We'll see that. That's where I'm a bit confused because um, especially because I was ready to just mob out to California, link up with high vibe and, and operate out that studio, but they're moving to Arizona now. Well, did, well, did you see? Now he's saying that he's he, that he doesn't think he's gonna go. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 been talking about it on a on a, his a full disclosure show because oh, wow. uh, they couldn't get in the building that they that they tried. So, but but so they're still looking. But I mean, California's on mandatory fucking lockdown for the next three months. Which three months, okay, yeah, I didn't know I, that was why he wanted to move. I thought it was yeah, a- yeah. Which I honestly within that three months i don't see how people aren't going to start rioting and like even more protesting i mean that's absolutely fucking asinine to be locked down for three fucking i mean come on dude like you want to talk about destroying the entire fucking state like that place is just that place reminds me of rome that is falling you said mandatory lockdown for three months minimum of three more months Okay, so never mind then. I'm gonna renew my. <laughs> I'm gonna at least stay out here for a minute. Yeah, okay. right. Yeah. Um, not. Uh, what What is your degree in? Communication studies. So I was. I oh, was. Yeah. I did electrical engineering. I did business. I was minoring in business, but not. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, 
I became, I became a professional student pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, no yeah. kidding. Um, but it's funny because you're gonna actually have more like more of an influence and, and more ability to just make your life happen when you stop going to school. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. And like all the all the stuff that got in my way or was the stuff I was told I was supposed to do, which oh. has been the hugest trip. It's just solidified that I've been lied to my whole life. But it's it's cool because I know I know there's a karmic element to it. Like now that I'm graduating, my progress moon is coming out my ninth house of higher education and Saturn is finishing out of Capricorn and Saturn in my chart is ninth house, which when it's in a natal house of your ninth, your uh, higher education is delayed and your relationship with your father is delayed, which I've found to be true um, in both cases. Wait, doesn't Saturn in the ninth. So, but yeah, but doesn't, um, doesn't the 10th house represent the father? Yeah. Good question. Yeah, it totally does. The 10th so house. Interesting, just with, with me and my, my, daughter situation yeah with saturn getting to the end of uh of capricorn but shit but my but my 10th house goes all the way to like 23 degrees of aquarius oh because because you're 23 aries yeah, yeah 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 um and you know what you're talking about it in a transiting sense too but yeah, you know, I, I think that's i'm glad you mentioned it because it would be cool to see technically it's in your 10th now it would be cool to see I, I, maybe once you clear that 10th house transit then that could clear the difficulty um behind maybe. that too yeah but I, I know in your case it's a lot of deception so we got to look at Neptune and Pisces and it's dealing with the Pisces so that that's also gonna I think Saturn will help you there by the time Saturn goes into Pisces, Pisces it's like okay yeah. let's sort through this bullshit that and lies that are um, yeah gonna be important I think but, you're right. but you to finish answering your question, um, and I'm so glad that you're willing to help me with this too, because I, I feel like um, I'm definitely, I know I was distracted before, but that's definitely something I want to do more, like more physical meetups, more, more um, reaching out to the community now. Yeah, and yeah. letting people know like you can you can travel from the world, come meet some really cool people, throw events and start doing community service and philanthropy. Yeah, man. I'm right there with you, bro. So, I hear you. North Node's in my third house now, so. Cool. You know. Oh, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Building That's that cool. shit up. I'm so excited for North Node and Gemini because um, I, I think it's just going to it's gonna do really well for those who've meant well and, and sincerely have been wanting to seek truth. So what do you think? Awesome. What do you think about the North Node being uh, like if if Gemini were their ascendant, and the North Node's there? What do you think that would mean? Okay, um, so your current destiny lesson, which I identify with, because after Gemini it'll be in Taurus, where my AC is. So everything. Yeah. Every experience, if we look at the North Node transit, is like um, the dance of destiny or, or an event space. The North Node is an event space. So when it now transits your rising, you become an instrument for that event space. You become an instrument of destiny. Okay. And so like as an event space, the lessons of the North Node will play out through you and you sponsor it. For you, as the North Node person, you're going to be coming into the truth of who you are because the South Node is bringing in familiar relationships uh -huh. that have to come into truth through your rising so that they can come into meaning of who they are. And so that Gemini rising is helping and sponsoring all these people. And it's like the more they help people find the meaning of them, Seventh House Sag, they find out the truth of who they are, First House Gemini. Okay. Like, yeah. Wow. But the North Node is very much so like a portal to it. And now I'm starting to pick up like time traveling, um, time traveling marker points. So like you can travel 10 years to the past based on what you marker here because um, the North Nodal opposition is 10 years at a time. And I'm starting to okay. experiment with the idea that nodal points are kind of like time capsules because 10 years ago um when the south node or when the north node 
was three degrees Capricorn conjunct mm -hmm. Pluto. Tangled, the movie came out about a lady who was quarantined in the kingdom of Corona. And then <laughs> 10 years later, you know, when the North Node was wow. there, we have a coronavirus. So yeah, it was, wow. it was crazy. Yeah. That's a trip. It's a super trip. That, that <laughs> let me know that, you know, it's bigger than us. Like this, this, this has been meant to happen. Make, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is just crazy. That is super crazy. crazy. Man. Yeah. But uh, my, my next question for you is, um, what, <laughs> um, oh, what would oh okay um and without naming any names but like or, or, or if you want to name names you can name names too but did you notice i guess it's kind of gemini me because i'm getting a little bit instigating but like <laughs> bring it on do you notice anyone who is um like what is what is the what what is your relationship or what have you noticed about fake spiritual people and like the people who use their platform uh to look spiritual but they're not really about that what have you noticed about that like before versus now is it worse um are people coming realer are you are you dealing with anyone that might be purporting a, a fake image and how do you, how what advice would you give to others uh to watch out i know that was a lot of questions but how, how what would advice would you give to those no, you're it's a, it's, a, it's a very valid question because we do see um i think right now um the universe is testing that that um theory if you will that people that are being authentic in their in their approach and in their experience i think they're gaining a lot more traction right now and i think the people that are faking the funk like look at um was a uh, john of god the dude that was harpo's fucking spiritual guy like he's been accused of like shown to uh, sexually assault like hundreds of women that he supposedly was healing right i think that um that that this plutonian energy is really bringing out all like all the false shit yeah. out there of everyone and when they're when they're gaining in notoriety they're gaining in the exposure at the same time um and and i feel like uh I feel like the people that are waking up and that are open to this, there's that vibration that is so strong right now that it's uh it's it's making people realize and sort of call out people's bullshit. Right. So I think so I think that like as as any community grows, right? If you look at you know like even like the UFC when they were starting to get bigger, you started to get like you know these people that would sl slip through the cracks that probably shouldn't really be at the level that they're at, you know. Um, and you see a lot of like, you know, like, like, for example, um, I know I've worked with a few different shamans, right, that are ayahuasca that like, you know, ser serve plant medicine. And I've worked with a couple people that should not have been doing that, but they convinced themselves that they were at that place. And, you know, thank God, when I was working with them, I was already at the place where I knew what I was doing, I could hold my own, but the energy is so distinctive. Are you talking about what I think you're talking about? Uh, no, I don't think that you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, um, Wait. No, the, the 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 energies are just they're so powerful, but but some people get their like first exposure to something like that in like okay. a dysfunctional experience, and I think that oh. we are implanted into those experiences to sort of like even out the balance, right? But. Um, but also I heard, uh, this one person that I'm thinking of in particular, like they got, they got shut down. Um, and, uh, you know, anything, anything that isn't pure or isn't authentic is, is being called out right now. So, you know, we just have to, and that's why, you know, people like you and I, um, we have to really, really like passionately stand up in that, in that power be very proactive with it because we want people to be able to really get that good quality information you know first and foremost and understand the the fundamentals of these energies and uh and as we do that i think that we are also you know sort of purging yeah all those energies so it's all being called out right now 
I did see um like there there's a lot of people trying to discredit astrology right now. I, I saw I saw the the uh, the Leo King post something about that like in the New York Times or something. What do you know what that was all about? I didn't read the article, but it was they were basically trying to um they were saying they, it was basically this stupid piece about discrediting astrology, um taking Susan Miller, who's a mainstream astrologer. And they were trying to say how her predictions about 2020 were false and how that makes astrology as a whole community filled with people making false predictions, even though like, and that's why David posted it. Cause he's like, we have proof yeah. of a lot of people with their predictions. So like for them to write that means that they purposefully they either saw that and didn't include it or they're just not researching enough because they want to spread disinformation. It's a biased piece. None of them are astrologers. None of them have any experience right, of course. any needle charts. So they shouldn't even be talking about it. But this is why people are still in the dark about it because there's no and, experts talking about it. Right, and this is where we're at right now. It's, it's just disinformation upon d disinformation, which is yeah. exactly why we have to make sure that we check in with our heart before we really decide to believe or trust anything really so yeah. true you know like once we once we make that decision ourselves to believe something especially right now that shit is getting like ingrained yeah. like belief systems i mean th this is the separation of the, the 3d and 5d like these belief systems are being solidified right now mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and i think next year it's sort of like we're picking teams for dodgeball right and once we pick the teams these are all belief systems and everything split down the center. Then next year with Saturn uh, square to Uranus, dodgeball. That it, yo, dude, that's <laughs> it. That's it. That's so it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so polarized now. It's like before right. you could say these beliefs and it's like, no, nah, it's not true. Now you have to live by it. And now yeah. it's like, which, which, which is, which is which, which is what? Oh, okay. Appreciate you. <laughs> you want it now or did you want me to put it on the stove, <laughs> the stove. Oh, okay cool. yeah, <laughs> there you go hell yeah that's some food <laughs> um yeah like no that's that's well said it's um and and that that's in a nutshell kind of what i've predicted uh since 2018 that this year and next year would be this is the this year and next year's guild wars so this year we're, you're recruiting people in your guild and then next year, the guilds go to war against each other. And it's like this person with this social media group sends their followers to attack this person's group. Yeah. That person sends their followers to, to say, oh, go comment this nasty stuff on their page. And it's yeah. like all that war. So that it, it's a social war, but it's still right. a war. So yeah, and you know, un unfortunately, like the way that the way that we get through this in the highest vibrational good is for all of us to come together hopefully you know we'll have enough people that are you know getting that message out so that eventually people will come to understanding that look you fighting this fear with fear is not going to help anything we have to we, we have to embrace fear with love and so like say like somebody says something to you in a grocery store right that like oh put your mask on or you're putting other people at risk or whatever the fuck their belief system is Okay, you go up and if you get triggered by that and you respond with, no, fuck you and your fucking mother, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, then that's just feeding that, oh, well, you know, I'm going to fucking, you know, punch you. I'm going to burn your house down. I'm going to shoot your kid. Like, it, like it just, it's going to oh, escalate. True. So what if, what oh, if true. when somebody says that, you know, I'll be like, okay, I appreciate your opinion, man. Like, good looking out. I'm going right. to disagree with you and here's why, you know, but I respect that you believe that. And when you come at it with that non-triggered, like, you know, compassionate energy, People are going to be like, feel that like, huh? Okay. I didn't expect that. Maybe there's something to this. And that's going to plant the seed of curiosity. And that curiosity is going to make them want to do their own research. And because we always look for confirmation bias when we believe. Confirmation right? bias. Yep. So like we're, we're going to look for whatever it is we believe. Like, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I see. You see so many people do that in relationships. I know they're cheating on me. I fucking know it. Okay. Well, you know, are, are you sure? And then. It like I, fuck, I, I used to do that all the time. It was terrible, but you know, but so we that'll give a, a chance to step away from the confirmation bias and get curious. And once people get curious and they come from more um, uh, uh, objective perspective, then it's all over. Then they realize how, just how 
how you know lopsided they were in in that belief system. So I think by embracing this from that place of compassion and love and not being triggered, that is where the real change is going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And I mean, thank goodness, uh, long over too. Um, because I think the other part of this is like, you know, psychological maladies that possess people and they're unseen. So it's like, you can't account for the irrational nature of, of people's behaviors. And that, and that's where we get into like the, the spiritual element of this war, how like thought, belief, thought patterns, beliefs, negative habits, they, they fight to take place in your heart and possess yeah. you. You know, so, exactly. um, yeah, but there's a lot of subliminal and, and uh, subconscious warfare feeding on these unconscious, you know, systems that we've been running on. And we've been basically like, if you've been living a lie and you've been distracting yourself from your truth for years, now you're stuck in your house with your family that you don't even know, and you don't know how to act or respond. Like that's when, okay, this is where, what your life really is underneath. And if you don't like it, then what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Right? So true. I think we're on the final round. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So my question to you. Hmm. Are you afraid to do ayahuasca again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'll, honestly, I'm not really afraid as much as... uh. I know the last time I did it, I just didn't want to because... Yeah, what it, happened the last time, man? Oh, okay. Well, I, the last time was pretty um, strong. And then yeah, I, know I, I remember you were in the corner by yourself, just like rocking back and forth and not talking to anybody. And that ain't like you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I didn't even know like there were people talking with each other. I thought it was like, um, <laughs> like during ceremony, I was just like, down, I was down like a lot. Um, but like, yeah, I just... The, my takeaway from the ceremonies is more of a Gemini problems thing because like I'm sitting with my thoughts and I can't move and I want to like move around and talk around. So it's, uh -huh. it, that's really my only beef with it. It's like, I have to like mature and like stay still and like, <laughs> still <laughs> with my mom. so, and then I have to, so that was that, that other than that, like, um, I'm not really opposed to doing it. I wanted to wait until I'm done with school. I like clear this. I'm in a better, I mean, that is, it's not like I need to, but just kind of clear this stuff out. So then I can like, sense. you know, focus more on being, um, it's interesting because I, I said I'd do combo before I do ayahuasca again. And combo is was, right. And combo was already like I, the last time I did combo, I was like, this is that, the third time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I know. Um, thank Thankfully because of you, I got to do DMT too. And I did DMT. And when I did the, um, uh, the sweat lodge those experiences are like i think i'm done like I, that made yeah. me that that killed the part of me that wanted to experiment with psychedelics to experiment and yeah that was when i i recognized that this isn't like recreational this is medicine nope. so that's when i was like yeah and that's another thing i respect and, and think about you helped me transform my view of that from like a psychedelic fun drug to like yeah you know, plant medicine that you can use to really like upgrade your spirituality which is super awesome but, um, yeah man um okay. i mean the the whole so, the so you basically feel like you know you you went on your journeys you had your experiences you got the knowledge that you needed to know and now you don't feel called to need to or want to continue to do that anymore because you got what you needed yeah and in fact um and and that's really it in a nutshell except like now that i got what i needed i just want to sort through um apply it, you know, to this life, sort through so that I can go back to it uh, more fully focused with no distractions. I like it. There yeah. you go. And nice. um, someone said, which one should be done first, combo or ayahuasca? I don't think there's any um, set way that it, it should be done. I think that um, that if you feel called to it, then you, 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 you go to a, hopefully you have someone that you trust or that you know that will 
you know, lead you in the right direction. Cause I mean, I, I give props to those guys that just up and, you know, fly down to Peru and go on like a, a three month, you know, yeah. like journey just to, I mean, that's, that's some ballsy shit. That's intense. Um, it, it, it's, it's a community that, you know, you really need to, you really need to, there's a very deep level and connection of trust that really needs to be, be there in order. Cause I mean, you're surrendering yourself and you're becoming the most vulnerable you'll ever be in your life. And, you know, having, I mean, once you get to that point where you're like, all right, fuck this, I'm ready to take that step. I want to grow. I want to release whatever's holding me back. I want to understand it. You know, I think that the universe conspires to bring you in contact with people, places, situations, and things to facilitate that process. So say like, you know, you just start talking about it, right? And then you meet someone, oh, hey, I know who somebody who does this, you know, and if it feels right to you, then you go with that feeling. Again, this is entirely intuitive process. Like for me, I was into, uh, I was introduced to the idea back in 2014. It was a client of mine and I'd never heard of ayahuasca before. And she told me about it. She's like, yeah, like if you're interested and I, I can get you plugged in. And I started watching documentaries and I listened to Joe Rogan and all these other things. And I was just like, yes, this is what I, this is what I've been looking for. This is what I need. And, um, you know, I, the, the, the spirit of ayahuasca has taught me I mean, the first time I, I ever felt unconditional love was was on an ayahuasca journey. Wow. Like, I didn't know what, I didn't never knew what that felt like. So clearly I was deep into some, you know, conditioned fear-based thinking. And, um, and I've learned so much from the processes and about, I think it was, I was about 10 or 15 ceremonies in where I met my, you know, my mentor um, that introduced me to Combo. And of course, that's how I was like, yeah, I'll jump in. I'll try anything. And then the first time I did it, <laughs> when I did combo, man, and it hit me, I was like, holy fuck. It's like, okay, I've never felt anything like this before. Um, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I, I, that was, I was legit. Like I, my, my, my first one, I did three days in a row. I did three day ceremony. And by the third day, I really was heavily contemplating like backing out, not doing it. And yeah, and, and my so, but I ended up doing it. But I went from six dots down to three, and even with that three dots, like I, I, it, it, I passed out. Damn! I passed out, and I woke up on my back, like with my legs and arms shaking like a cockroach. And my mentor was standing above me, like, "Yeah, good job, brother, get it." <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, I woke up after, and I was like, "Woo!" Let's go. I feel like I felt like I weighed like a thousand pounds less. It was, but uh -huh. what it took for like, even ayahuasca wasn't like that hard. Yeah. At least it was a little fun during the ayahuasca. Right. But like combo yeah. was just fucking miserable. But yeah, combo was so intense. Yeah. But, but I, but I, I also realized that like I had some very like deep um, detoxification that my body really needed, you know, like yeah. between be ex being exposed to who knows what when I was in Iraq and in the military and and then you know when I was competing in bodybuilding I was taking a shit ton of performance enhancing drugs you know because I had this attitude like I'll do whatever it takes I want to be a pro I want to do this and that and I mean I just I was an experiment on myself and I looked great for a long time but I think it's you know like I had to really fully take a step back on the other direction because I didn't realize man like I push my body way too fucking far. And so I've really taken like a strategic approach to identifying these deeply buried, um, you know, imbalances and like toxicants that I had in there. And I've really had to work to get them out. But now thank God I can say that, you know, I'm 41 years old and I'm more balanced and healthier than I think I've ever been in my life. That's awesome. So and you know, that's where it's at. Ayahuasca to me was like, um, that meme where like the the mom puts a pizza in front of the baby's face and then switches it out with medicine and it's like oh <laughs> like going into it that oh this is about to be a crazy psychedelic experience I'm about to be seeing visions and then it's just like oh my god this is like a, <laughs> this god. is like a therapy session what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> I was not expecting to be taking dumps every twenty minutes <laughs> oh my yeah, god the deepest therapy you'll ever have man. The second time I did it, I was like, oh, I'm never doing this again. I don't feel anything like nothing's happening. And then like the very next morning I woke up, I felt clear. I, I felt like I had the greatest detox ever. My body was glowing and it was a three day ceremony, but I left early. 
the first day. I didn't even do the rest of the two days, but my body was glowing. Like, Hell I yeah. didn't, I didn't expect to feel it. I just felt like amazing. That's how, and and that's what's so fascinating about that medicine is it always gives you what you need, not what you think you're going to get or what you want. Exactly. Yeah. And it's it's interesting how that how, how it how it shows itself sometimes. Yeah. Really. And and each each time. I haven't had the same experience, um, but uh, it was definitely it was it was definitely grateful though for sure. But um, my last question for you is, what are at least two zodiac sun signs that, and even if it's at least one, that's cool. But um, that you've dated or you'd like to date that does it for you that you just like oh, all right, I really really connect with this sign. Hmm. Uh, Scorpio. Definitely, Scorpio is sexy as fuck. Yeah, they are. They're, 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 their energy, and you know, my Venus is in Scorpio, so I'm just, I noticed that I can notice a Scorpio out of anywhere. Like they're just so fucking sexy. It, it, <laughs> um, so that'd be definitely one. And uh, hmm, and I'd have to say, uh, I can only pick two. Shit. Oh, all right. Okay, you can pick three. Okay, so uh, Sagittarius. Oh, Sagittarius um, is sexy. Yeah, that I I like Sagittarius. Like, yeah. very, like playful and outgoing, and just like their their, their personality is just fun to be around, right? Uh, you know, in in contrast to my seriousness, yeah. and it, like even my charisma is a little too serious. Um, and then the third one I'd say is probably uh, Cancer. Wait. Yeah, can't that nurturing, loving, emotional. Yeah, that's like, yo, that's my polarity, man. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. so, so, Cancer and Scorpio. I expected you to say those two. That's what's up. Okay. I wasn't expecting <laughs> Sag, but Sag is definitely hot. I, I, I fuck with Sag. Hell yeah. All right. So, thank you, bro. We're definitely going to have a lot more talks where this came from. So, 100%, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem. I got your website. I got your Instagram and your Facebook in the description box below. Make sure you guys hit him up. Um, yeah. Shoot him a message. Say hi. He's super cool. And uh, do you have any last? <laughs> do you have any final word of advice or encouragement for anyone? Um, you know, I, my 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 main message that I just have been saying to everybody all the time is step into your fucking power and take responsibility for your life because the world needs you right now. That's Amen. Simple. Nice and simple. Yeah. Step it, step into that power for sure. I think if there was ever a time uh, to do that it's right like now, everything's pushing yeah. and that and doing that action will connect you to your tribe and it'll build your tribe. And right now the tribes, like we need our tribe. Oh That's yeah. All we got. Amen. More than ever. So we're going to end this here. Um, you guys stay blessed as always. Thank you guys for rocking out in the live chat. Uh, Justin, much appreciated. <laughs> You're much um, appreciated too, man. I love you, brother. Likewise, bro. Appreciate you again. And uh, you guys stay blessed as always. And until next time, peace out.